Hello. This segment is about the challenge of dealing with climate change, how that relates to the oil and gas industry, and about carbon capture and storage. In order to put this in context, what I'm going to do here is so, show some slides that give you an indication of the scale of the problem that we're dealing with. So here is a graph on the right of how many billion tonnes of CO2 we release into the atmosphere each year as a function of date. This is from the IPCC special report, um, Global Warming of One and a Half Degrees, published last year, which is essentially about how do we prevent there being warming of greater than one and a half degrees. Now, the red is what I've put on. We're almost in 2020. We are currently emitting about 37 gigatons of CO2 each year, and that is growing, okay? The red arrow is showing the trend upwards. Any projection, and what the different lines there are different projections about how we will limit dangerous climate change, show essentially from now a rapid and sustained uh, decrease in our emissions. And if you look carefully, there's a zero here at about 2050. And in fact, those, ne those emissions have to go negative. We have to be taking CO2 out of the atmosphere in many of these scenarios. So we need to do something now. The obvious solution, well, it's the fossil fuel industry that is releasing the carbon dioxide in the first place. So simply close down the fossil fuel industry. Um, and in particular, it's the oil and gas industry, oil companies that are being demonized for their historical and current um, contribution to climate change. However, this is neither practical nor really desirable. It's pra not practical, it's not happening, it's not going to happen. We need oil and gas, not just to power our cars, to power our aeroplanes for heavy industry, but for a huge number of products essentially our civilization will collapse within a week without the oil and gas industry. And so simply saying they're evil, they're contributing to the problem, we need to close them down and close them down more or less, you know, within the next few years isn't in fact a viable solution. It's in fact not dealing with the problem sensibly. The only way of dealing with it is in fact to do something with the CO2 that is produced. And of course, that is to collect that CO2, normally from large point sources, and to store it deep underground. So let's, let's um, put some numbers to see the uh, scale of the challenge that we're dealing with here. This is something that anyone can do. It's not, um, there's no sort of mis mystery here. The BP Statistical Review of Energy provides each year a compendium of oil and gas production. So the units sometimes are a little bit odd, but in 2017, for which we last have reliable data, um, oil production averaged 93 million barrels, this STB, stock tank barrels per day, but that cumulative for the whole year has been converted into kilograms nicely in the table. So it's 4.4 times 10 to the 12 kilograms. It is a lot of oil, of course. And for gas, um, it's actually given as a volume. So what we're gonna do is gonna work out how much CO2 does that represent? assuming that all that oil and gas is burnt. Um, that's quite easy. We assume that the oil on average has a composition um, similar to octane, and we know the molecular mass of octane, and for each molecule of octane, we produce eight molecules of carbon. So what we have here, the uh, 3.1 times 10 to the 14, is the number of moles of carbon produced if we burn all that oil. Um, for the gas, we have a volume, not a mass. So the trick here is to use the ideal gas law, um, where N in that equation is in fact the number of moles. So by putting in the numbers um, and the putting in standard temperature and pressure um, as defined by the oil industry, um, we get um, a smaller number, about half. So when we look at oil and gas, right, sort of two bits oil, one bit gas in terms of contribution to um, CO2 emissions. So we can add up the, the total, and then we know the molecular mass of CO2, and we get um, this large number, two times 10 to the 10 kilograms, which uh, in the units that we, in, we were using before is 20 gigatons. Now, it's not 37 gigatons. You might be wondering, what about the other 17? Well, that's the burning of coal, 
And actually the burning of coal can and is being phased out in many countries. And the second is obviously due to land use change. Right? So uh, burning forests, for instance, that contributes uh, to the total. But the oil and gas industry, you can do the numbers, it's about 20 gigatons. So what you have to do is that amount within the next few decades is going to have to be stored um, underground globally each year. There may be a reduction in the amount of oil and gas that's actually produced, but we are looking at that order of magnitude. It seems like it's a huge challenge, but it's not impossible because the technology of putting things under the ground is similar to the technology of taking things out. And that technology exists in the oil and gas industry and the, those companies that service the oil and gas industry. So it creates an enterprise of the size in terms of volumes handled as the current hydrocarbon industry that makes sense. So it's not impossible, but it's a big challenge, which then leads to here really a call to arms what would be a proper long-term strategy for the oil industry? And my feeling is it's to commit to be CO2 neutral in a reasonably short uh, space of time, certainly for the independent oil companies to try and turn around their operations in a decade. And this is not to stop producing oil and gas, but to store a volume of CO2 underground, which is at least as large as the CO2 produced, not just in their own operations, but then they don't count for the stuff that's been sold, but in their operations refining and when that hydrocarbon is burnt. Okay. Now, no industry is going to do it at the moment because that comes at an enormous cost and that's just a cost. So what then needs to happen is to be upfront with the public and to lobby governments and to say this is what is needed because if we don't do it I think we are committed to dangerous climate change and we may also find ourselves in a situation where we're not allowing the oil and gas industry to operate and so then we have the risks associated with not having products that are absolutely valuable to us. So to my mind this is a much more honest, a much more robust approach to dealing with climate change and one that could succeed if we all got behind it. So with that, uh, thank you very much. That's my opinion. Um, you can look at the numbers and, and form your own opinion on this. Um, but this is, this is my view of, of where we should be heading. Thank you very much.